This is RTV6 News at 7, working for you. Good evening, I'm Amanda Storantino. A Noblesville mother has filed a formal complaint against the district alleging they failed to address bullying, racism, and her son's special needs. Our Call 6 Investigates' Kara Kenny has shocking video of a fight that mom says should not have happened in the first place. Elijah is a 16-year-old sophomore at Noblesville High School, a native of Alaska. Elijah's mom says her son has endured repeated bullying. The other football players telling him he should go eat his dog or um, cat or whatever. According to this complaint filed Monday with the State Department of Education against Noblesville schools, Elijah's mom has been trying for years to get Elijah special services for his emotional disability. The complaint says Elijah suffers from depression and anxiety and says the district went against the advice of their own school psychologist and denied Elijah special education services. It's frustrating and um, powerless. As a parent, you feel very powerless. Things came to a boiling point on September 25th. This video shows Elijah in class talking to another student in a pink shirt. Down. Do I need to call someone out here? Yeah, you do. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I should kiss. Oh. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Elijah was expelled from school. Records show video of the incident was used as evidence. He was in self-defense. It is so clear that he was standing there. He asked this other student multiple times to back up and get out of his face. Back up, back up. You can hear the teacher instructing her to go sit down. And instead of backing down or walking away, she gets into his face, in his personal space. She touched him first. She pushed him. He pushed her back. Then you can see where she swung on him. Elijah and his mother's attorney, Tom Blessing, says schools have to follow a federal mandate that requires schools to identify and evaluate children with disabilities. School had a choice. We can either help the student or punish him. And if you think about it, it's much easier, right? We'll just kick him out of school and we don't have to deal with him. Elijah could still face criminal charges for this incident. The formal complaint asked the school to lift the expulsion and develop a proper plan for Elijah that includes services. Kara Kenny, RTV6. And Noblesville Schools released a statement to RTV6 saying, quote, student safety is our top priority and we take physical altercations very seriously. They are a rare occurrence at NHS and are dealt with swiftly and seriously in collaboration with our Noblesville Police Department school resource officers. We've addressed both individuals involved for the serious violation of our code of conduct. Well, it's looking like weather could get in the way of your Halloween plans, so public safety leaders suggest that you come up with a plan B for your family. Whether it's trunk or treating or other indoor Halloween activities, you should try to find something Thursday night that's out of the elements. And if you do trick or treat outside, wear layers. Here's one reliable option. Every single Indianapolis Fire Department will be giving out treats from 6 to 8 p.m. on Halloween. If the weather is looking to ease up a bit and you do want to go trick or treating with the kids, we have a list of area trick or treat times up right now on the RTV6 mobile app and the IndieChannel.com. Storm Team 6 Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory is here with the latest update on your Halloween forecast. All the kiddos have an eye on it, Kevin. Yeah, the, Serious they're tests. hardy. They'll, they'll want to go no matter what, probably, so you may need to talk them out of that. But uh, temperatures, they'll be falling as we go into the evening hours. The wind gusts increasing and scattered showers. Notice I didn't say just rain showers because I think we'll have both rain showers and snow showers in central Indiana on Thursday night. 4 o'clock Thursday afternoon, wind is starting to increase. It's increasing as the colder air arrives from the west. We'll see 30 mile per hour gusts and even stronger as we get later in the night, well past the trick or treat hours. As far as uh, the wind forecast, that brings in the colder temperatures across central Indiana. As you look at these temperatures falling through the evening hours into the 30s, cold enough that we change rain showers to snow showers or at least mix in snow showers. Four o'clock, the green is shower activity. Now you see the change in colors representing 
snow showers mixing in and then kind of taking over as a parting shot when the colder air arrives. We'll talk about what's ahead for Friday and the weekend and fill in the gap for tomorrow coming up. Tonight, RTV6 is working to get a fix for this frustrated neighborhood here for months. Water has been streaming down Belmont Avenue on the southwest side, and residents say despite several calls to Citizens Energy and the Mayor's Action Center, no one has come to fix this problem. They say they are worried about infrastructure and the cost of all that water being wasted as some utilities consider raising rates. One mom says she kept trying to go through the normal avenues to get it fixed, but got fed up. It was about the sixth or seventh time that I called Citizens Energy Group and I said, this is enough. I I'm calling six for help because there's nothing that one person can do until they turn to the news. When you're the low man on the totem pole, no one cares about your words. It's only when someone who's higher up gets involved that something's actually done about problems. We took the concerns to Citizens Energy Group. It says it is sending out crews today to look at the leaking hydrant. Citizens says the issue was, quote, inadvertently marked low priority in the system, and that's why it had not been addressed before now. A suspended Catholic priest charged in a sexual abuse investigation is out of jail tonight after he was arrested early this morning. Hamilton County authorities say David Marcotte was booked just before 5 o'clock this morning. Marcotte is 32 years old and is charged with three felonies, child solicitation, vicarious sexual gratification, and dis dissemination of matter harmful to minors. Now, court documents accuse Marcotte of sending inappropriate pictures to the juvenile victim and engaging in sexual conduct over social media, including a picture and attempts to recruit others to participate. The Archdiocese of Indianapolis suspended Marcotte in February after its victim assistance coordinator learned of the abuse allegations. The Archdiocese alerted police and notified the chair of the Archdiocese and Review Board about the allegation. Over the years, Marcotte has worked at several places, including the University of Indianapolis, St. Malachi Parish in Brownsburg, and Roncalli High School. In less than 24 hours, this crime-ridden abandoned apartment complex will be in the process of finally coming down. The city is going to start tearing down Oak Tree Apartments tomorrow morning on the northeast side near 42nd and Post. The community has wanted it gone for years now. In August, the Indiana Court of Appeals ruled in favor of the city of Indianapolis, saying it could go ahead with demolition. The apartments were condemned in 2014 after years of crime and problems meeting housing standards. Now, the demolition is expected to take at least six months. School safety and security is the focus of a referendum that will be on the ballot next week for Center Grove schools. If approved, district leaders say it would bring in $24.8 million over the next eight years. Money would be used for things like hiring additional school resource officers, upgrading emergency alert and camera systems, and hiring additional counselors and mental health staff. One school board member says with these upgrades, Center Grove would be one of the safest districts in the state, while some who oppose it say the upgrades are not necessary. As a parent, when having kids in the school district, I felt it was too important for me to not ask the community to vote on this for the safety, security, and the mental health of all of our students. When I was in high school, everything was fine. Like if we, if there was any chaos going on, it was handled very quickly, and the teachers were always like right there to stop it. If approved, the referendum would cost the owner of a $200,000 house about $112 extra per year. Well, yesterday we showed you a shocking video of the moment a man was hit by an Indigo bus. Filing a claim with Indigo is a very specific process, but what if you were hit by a city county vehicle? You may think you need to hire an attorney and file a lawsuit, but that is not the case. We found less than 40% of people who received settlements from the city of Indianapolis used an attorney or filed a lawsuit. Most people filed what is called a tort claim on their own. And here's how you can do it. Start by saving all bills and receipts related to the incident. You then complete the notice of tort claim, which can be found on the city website. Keep in mind, each person who had a loss needs to file a separate claim. You must submit the claim in writing within 180 days of the incident. The city has 90 days to respond to your claim. If they determine it should be paid, you'll receive settlement paperwork and payment will be processed in a few weeks. Bad and looking to get worse, things are not slowing down for flames eating away at California. Coming up, looking ahead at the strong winds on the way that could fan the progress. Plus, a little bit later, sometimes when you want to go forward, you have to go back to the basics. How these Indiana researchers could be changing the future of robots by imitating Mother Nature. This is the news at 7 on RTV6. RTV6 is working for you. 
Welcome back to RTV6 News at 7. The wildfire danger continues to keep communities in northern and southern California on edge tonight. Millions of residents are watching and waiting as the strongest forecasted winds in years return. ABC's Elena Gomez is in Los Angeles with the latest. Firefighters in Los Angeles are preparing for one of the biggest Santa Ana wind events of the year. Meteorologists expecting gusts up to 80 miles per hour in some areas. We're in this critical, really 24-hour window. We're hopeful that the winds will ease off after midnight tonight. Uh, but tomorrow, the humidities remain incredibly dry for the region on the order of 5 to 15 percent. Those conditions expect to last in the L.A. area until Thursday evening. Firefighters are on the front lines of the Getty Fire, working around the clock as thousands of residents remain evacuated from the area. NBA player LeBron James, who was among the thousands of residents forced to leave their homes, thanked firefighters. The most important thing is the first responders, how important they are and how committed they are to be able to respond at that, at, at, at that hour, at that speed, and be able to diffuse it um, as fast and as quick as possible. Officials say it may be a few days before anyone will be allowed back. So people will not be returning to their homes this evening. Uh, you should prepare for that now because uh, those extreme wind events we're going to see, uh, those can pick up and trans, uh, transfer the fire uh, miles away sometimes. In Northern California, the battle against the Kincaid fire is just as fierce. Tens of thousands of acres already charred. The fire that's been burning for six days is more than 85 square miles in size and has destroyed 94 buildings. Officials say mandatory evacuations are in place for much of the area and those residents should be ready to leave at a moment's notice. Crews have been working nonstop here at the Getty Fire. Their main goal today will be to increase containment of the Getty Fire while the winds are cooperative. The L.A. Fire Chief saying that just one ember can blow for miles and spark a fire. In Brentwood, California, Elena Gomez, ABC News. Coming up, new technology aims to rework how we deal with our feelings, but it's not an answer to everything. The warning you need to hear before downloading a mental health app. And grab the umbrella. We're back with more rain tomorrow. Sky high chances for rain. We'll talk about when we transition to much colder air coming up. Down on the phone. This is RTV6 News at 7, working for you. New today, a former school bus driver in northern Indiana will serve probation for allowing students to drive her bus while other students were on board. The Times of Northwest Indiana reports Joandria McAtee struck a deal with prosecutors to plead guilty to a felony charge of neglect of a dependent. The charge will be reduced to a misdemeanor if she completes probation. McAtee was arrested in September of last year after videos surfaced of her allowing kids as young as 11 to drive her bus in a rural area of Valpo. Parezo. One in 25 people experience mental illness every day, according to the National Alliance of Mental Illness. Now, some of those people are turning to their cell phone to help ease mental challenges. But one doctor has a warning if you want to download a mental health app, Annie Taylor has what to look for before downloading. It got to the point where I didn't sleep for about two weeks. And I couldn't, I just couldn't function anymore. Many people who suffer from anxiety or depression turn to a doctor for help. When someone comes to a psychologist or a therapist, I very clearly tell people, I don't fix you at all. I give you the knowledge, the tools, and the support for you to fix yourself. And sometimes those tools include mental health apps, which Dr. Cameron Seppa says are becoming more popular, but he does have warnings for users. Companies like Goop, who have been very publicly kind of bashed for you know, promoting stuff that falls into, you know, astrology territory. Basically, because apps are not regulated, they are allowed to claim whatever they want without having to show proof. And is it based on an evidence base? Are they continuing to publish to prove that they're what they're doing, they're claiming um, is actually effective? And third, you know, are they working with a large population in the real world? He's seen some claims be based on a study of as few as five people. You go on their website and look at the look at the claims. Like, do they, do they even have publications? Is it based on some? that um, you're familiar with. Also, watch out for certain wellness apps. But meditation is obviously a, a very helpful way of uh, training your attention. And that can obviously have beneficial effects if you're dealing with, um, like I said, mild to moderate anxiety, maybe even depression. Um, but it's not a replacement for holistic treatment. There are even apps that allow you to call and text licensed therapists. But SEPA says for those, seek medical professionals to give it a thumbs up. 
And this is one story that goes to show you should never give up and try anything possible if you're in a bad situation. A once missing woman is now safe thanks to her SOS signal. 56 year old Mary Joanna Gomez was visiting Sequoia National Park in California. Her family got worried when she didn't show up for work the next day. She had gotten lost on her way back to her car. She realized she was in trouble and used some rocks to spell out SOS. Searchers in an Air National Guard plane spotted the message a few days later and found her nearby. She was cold and thirsty, but otherwise okay. Incredible story there. Wow, right? Yeah, you She's just lucky. wonder if you put something, I mean, I wonder how big the SOS was, obviously big enough to see from the air. Check this out to the west. We talk about our temperatures getting oh colder. Denver never warmed up today. Their high temperature, 19. Their current Ooh. temperature, 11. They've got a lot of snow on the ground, too. Anywhere from 6 to 12 inches of snow along the front range of the Rockies. 16 in Billings, Montana. The cool air plowing to the south and east. And in Indiana, we're state divided. 43, as you can see, up in Gary, while temperatures right along the Ohio River still hugging 60. In the tug of war, the cooler air will win out as we go through the evening hours and overnight tonight. I want to show you the rain that's in Missouri. On the north side of this, it will change to snow. That's why in portions of Illinois, there's a winter weather advisory, one to three inch snowfall expected. This will impact Chicago. They're not in the advisory, but temperatures will be above the freezing mark. Just kind of a wet, slushy mess in the morning hours there tomorrow. But if you're traveling to Chicago, just be aware of that. Our wind is changing direction coming out of the north, northwest. Well, in the southeast portion of the state where you still have milder temperatures, the wind is out of the southwest. That transition will strengthen the wind as we go through tomorrow. We'll have winds 20 miles per hour. One o'clock in the morning, rain in western Indiana, snow in portions of Illinois. All this slides to the north and east. We wake up to widespread rain rain, generally light rain, and as we go through the day tomorrow, you'll need your umbrella all day. Periods of rain possible anytime. Wind will be northeast at about 20 miles per hour. As we plan your day tomorrow, temperatures won't really change. If we can hit 50, uh, that's something uh, significant. Otherwise, most areas will stay uh, probably in the upper 40s, 50 degrees maybe at about 4 p.m., then upper 40s after that. As we look beyond, there you go, Wednesday morning, the ongoing rain and then these hit and miss showers through the day. Temperatures on Thursday falling. We stay in the 40s until probably early evening, then they'll drop into the 30s. And as I mentioned, as that colder air catches the remaining rain, we switch over to some snow or snow showers as this pulls away Thursday night. The trick to trick-or-treating will be staying dry and dealing with wind gusts to 30 miles per hour and dressing warm enough because the wind chill temperatures will feel like they're in the lower 30s. Temperatures on Friday, at least this comes with sunshine, 45 for the high temperature. In the morning hours, as we get to Saturday and a Sunday, temperatures in the upper 20s, really Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Temperatures in the 20s to start the day. Highs only in the 40s. We have some sunshine. It's raining leaves right now across all of central Indiana. Yeah, if you're waiting that. to fight the battle, I think we'll dry out enough over the weekend. You'll have a good 48 hours to start raking. Yeah, you got it. Okay. Well, someone will have a new home soon, thanks to volunteers from Indianapolis. Today, Carrier employees began their 21st Habitat for Humanity home build. The company's workers have built a Habitat home every year since 1998. And a Carrier VP says it's one way they enjoy giving back. It's so important to be able to be able to provide somebody a home and everyone can relate to that and our employees again have rallied around this for the last 25 plus years and again it's a part of our culture of our company and to be able to provide somebody a home is something very important to us. Since 1995, Carrier has donated the heating and cooling equipment for every home built by the Greater Indy Habitat for Humanity Chapter. Still ahead, what do robots of the future and chameleons have in common? A whole lot if these researchers have a say in it. Our reptiles are providing a blueprint for advancement. And that's all coming up next right here on RTV6. Better by working together from day one.
This is the news at 7 on RTV6. Researchers at Purdue are discovering some cool things about improving robot technology by using chameleons as a footprint. They've developed what they say is a new class of entirely soft robots and actuators that work at high speeds using elastic movement. Now, act actuators are basically components of machines that move and control the mechanism. Researchers did a lot of this by mimicking the tongue of chameleons, where elastic energy is key. One associate professor working on the project says if they could create other robots capable of that same motion at high speed, automated tasks could be completed a lot faster and easier. High speed is right. We're seeing an extra slow motion, right? And it still goes quickly. Mm -hmm. Temperatures will change quickly as we get to the end of the work week. First, I want to show you Bear and Scooter. And you're saying, wait a minute, there are two dogs in that picture? Where's Scooter? <laughs> Scooter's the big boy. Obviously. Bear is on the ground there. <laughs> uh, it's dry this evening for now. If you take a walk, temperatures will be in the 40s. Okay, thanks for making RTV6 your choice for news. Our next newscast is tonight at 11.